Uh, hey everybody, how you going? Uh, haven't been on for a little while. Um, I hope everyone's healthy, uh, safe and well. Uh, we're up here in North Queensland and I guess for a lot of us it's uh, it's time to basically put the camper into hibernation, I guess. Uh, we don't really have much of a, a much of a choice. Um, some of the things we can do and probably the most important is um, our battery, right? Which, so we need to look after that battery. Now, some people, uh, there's a lot of uh, different solutions out there. Some people just, you know, put it on the, the solar panel. Uh, some people just plug it into 240 volt. Um, obviously, if you're going to do that, right, make sure you got your inverter, guys. So you take you from the 10 amp, right? This one's just uh, from Bunnings, right? Eh? And then a lot of people are using the amphibian. Uh, I've got the amphibian as well. Um, and that, uh, that one's generally you uh, packed away. And that'll take you off, obviously onto your 15 amp lead, and then you can top up your battery using the CTEC system or whatever system uh, you might have in your camper. Um, and another way, and probably one of the best ways, is invest into. Uh, it's a little dark in the camper, so I'm not going to crawl around in there at the moment. Um, is to invest in a, a multi-stage charger or 240 volt charger. Um, uh, so basically, uh, how I do it is I have a projector, uh, a five-stage charger, and that, that charger also allows me to uh, select the battery type, so whether I'm running an AGM, uh, calcium, lead acid, whatever it may be. Like most of us, we run an AGM, so I've got a 120 amp hour uh, full river AGM battery uh, that sits in the box. And then what I've done is I've actually mounted that, that charger uh, in the uh, next to uh, the CTEC, and then I've uh, plugged that charger into the power point that uh, where the CTEC plugs in, and then uh, all I have to do is I don't have to basically crawl around in there. Okay, I just plug the camper into 240 volt as you've seen just before, and then that uh, runs the charger, and that charger then directly attaches um, to the battery box to um, to charge the battery up. Um, to save me crawling around in there on top of the battery box, I've got a little uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, voltmeter, right, which then connects to my phone. So whenever I plug in, I turn the phone on, turn on the Bluetooth, right, and then that gives me the, the battery reading. Uh, that's on right now, and uh, batteries are pumped up to uh, just a bit over 14 volts. Why is it better to have a 240 volt charger is... It's a multi-stage charger. It's going to give the battery exactly what it needs. So rather than just let the CTEC do it, uh, which is, for want of a better term, is a dumb charger. Okay, yes, it charges the battery, but it doesn't take it through. It's uh, a full gamut. All right, that the multi-stage charger can. So you know, uh, through a decalcification, uh, goes through a bulk charge. Right. -o takes that right up and then it obviously goes into a float trickle charge all right and then if you use any power it'll jump back up out of the trickle charge all right and jump back into the bulk stage for example um, and, and i even use that when i go to powered sites at caravan parks um, because it's smarter it gives the battery exactly what it needs all right and it's going to prolong the life of your battery all right um, whether you believe me or not, there are some people out there that basically charge their battery on 240 volt at home, go off grid camping, and believe it or not, don't actually provide any charge to that battery. They don't take solar, they don't take anything, they just live off the battery. Right? That, that, that battery, if you continue that and drag that battery, that AGM below 50%, Right, it, it's it's days are numbered, and you're going to pay a fortune in the long run, um, just killing batteries. All right, and there's been people on the side actually come on and say, "Oh, my battery's not lasting as long as it should." And then a few more questions later, you find out they're not actually putting anything back at all. They're just relying on that battery. All right, so you you got to give that battery something. You got to keep it above that fifty percent, and obviously. If you're just relying on solar, you need to get that battery to 100% before before uh, sunset and last light, okay? Because that's going to get you through the night with, with uh, whatever you're going to do. Anyway, 
Um, so that that's the way I do it, and I think it's people are going to have different opinions, but it's the best way to look after your battery. Okay, that multi-stage, so, and they don't cost a fortune. Something like projector, you know, it's middle of the road. Uh, it's not going to cost you big dollars. Right? It's surely, it's certainly going to cost you a lot less than buying a new AGM uh, 120 amp hour battery. That's for sure. So, going into hibernation, yeah. So just make sure. Um, some, like I said, some people just leave the solar panel out there and just just let that sort of trickle charge in. Just be careful with that if you're not using. A DC to DC as your solar reg, you're using a cheap solar reg that's on the back of the panels. Just monitor it, okay, and be very careful that that solar panel, right, doesn't overcharge your battery. Um, and you'll know because it'll swell up, okay. It, you may even get a smell inside the van, all right. So just monitor that, uh, you know, keep an eye on that um, if that's the way you're going to do it. Um, and I usually just put the charger on once a week, give it a zap. Uh, once it goes into float mode, I generally then turn it off. Um, and that, and that uh, keeps up the battery pretty well. Okay, so some of the other stuff we wrote, right? Um, probably good time now to, you know, open up everything, okay? So the little hatch here, that. Give the rubbers a nice, you know, rub with some silicon spray, all right? And, Get them open and give that rubber a rest. You know, don't keep it you know, under load all the time. Same, same for the camper. All right, obviously I'm uh, a bit lucky, but most people can fit their campers inside the uh, inside the garage. All right, and again, I've got the roof up. All right, probably don't need to raise it this high. And again, all that rubbers, give them rubbers, give them a clean, a little bit of silicon. All right. And give them a rest. So get the get the lid open. If you're outside, so you can't have it you know, in the garage, and you've got a cover on it. Again, the the minimum you can do is um, underneath the cover, just undo your latches, right? Just take that, that that pressure off the rubbers and let them let them come back, you know, to their full size. So get uh, get the pressure off. I guess inside, um, a lot of people already know now. You know, the damp rid containers. You know, a couple of those in there. Uh, Make sure that the fridge is clean. Give it a wipe, a little, uh, just a rag and a little bit of uh, uh, vanilla essence. All right, make it smell nice and then obviously jam the tea towel in the door. Two things, it airs the fridge out and the other thing, again, it gives the fridge seals a bit of a rest. All right? They're not under load all the time. Uh, make sure you haven't left in anything in there that's not mice, rat proof or ant proof. Uh, get some ant baits in there if necessary. Right. Um, and that's about it. Just make sure yeah, you're not you're not you know, attracting uh, you know your ants, your mice, all that sort of stuff, um, and your damp rid in there to to help out. You know, suss out your fire extinguisher. You know, make sure the needle's still in the green. Take it out, give it a shake. If it's one of the powdered forms, upside down, rubber mallet, give it a whack on the ass. Right, so disturb all that powder in there give it a good shake and just make sure it's still in the green it's going to work if you need it uh, we've spoken about the fridge um, good time to check out your risers give them a bit of you know a bit of silicon spray uh, get in checked out check out your winding mechanism I've done a, uh, a video on that uh, previously uh, if they're looking scummy and you know they get a bit of a corrosion on there Right, give them a light sand and then again with a silicon spray. Don't go too hard on them because you're just going to expose them and it'll take off uh, that sort of gold sort of coating there. All right, and just make sure they're going to work all right. I guess you can you can get your bags out, you know, your, your bed awnings, get them out, air them out. Um, and people have spoken a lot about uh, things you can use to uh, to clean them up as well. Okay, the boot again. Got my boot propped open, give the rubber a break. You know, give it a wipe with some silicon spray. Um, your hitch, right? If it's like mine, I've got the Highland hitch, right? And it's got grease nipples on it, so you know, obviously, you grease those up. Get your bedding off, you know, get it aired out. Um, that's my little Ryobi fan there. Um, I just used that on the very last trip we did, we came back, it was a little bit damp. Um, so I just had that blowing in there with the roof up uh, just to get rid of any excess moisture. 
um, on the canvas. Um, it was fairly dry. Um, I guess the other big one is uh, your tyres. All right. Uh, so for those people that are, can't put it in the garage, all right, um, I sure to heed my own advice there. Okay, put your feet down and uh, and uh, crank it up. Give the springs a rest. You know, it gives you give your uh, your, your shockies. You know, give them a rest. Take a bit of the pressure off. Uh, the tyres, obviously, try and maintain the pressures uh, as best you can. But the biggest killer is uh, you know sitting, especially those that are uh, outside. So you've got uh, your cover on, all right. Um, Try and get the tyres up off the ground if you can. You know, uh, get yourself some pavers, or you know, and get uh, some couple of jack stands, and get them off the ground if you can. You now out of the damp, uh, if it's sitting, especially if it's sitting on the lawn. All right. Um, and the other one is, you can you know, give them a bit of a spray and that, but the biggest killer is is sunlight. So try and get your tyres out of the sun if you can. All right. If you go down super cheap auto or places like that, you get those spare tire covers, those vinyl ones, all right? They're cheap as chips. So if you can uh, crank up the, the van with your jack, get it onto jack stands so you've got a bit of clearance off the ground, and you can put those spare tire covers on your on your tires to keep the sun off them. Well, the other option is obviously, you've probably seen it in the caravan park, some of the permanents, uh, if you want to, uh, Get the real carny look, right? A piece of plywood, right? And then just pop that on the side of the tire, just to keep the sunlight off it, because the sun is going to be the biggest, your biggest problem uh, with your tires deteriorating. And again, I already I did another clip, uh, you know, reference uh, your tire age and that. So get in there, check the dates on your tires, right? And and uh, just see whether they need replacing as well. Again. I've done videos before, probably a good time to uh, check and maybe repack your bearings. Um, but other than that, you know, if you're uh, in the in the garage, I guess that's a, that's a big advantage. Um, but uh, anyway, guys, I, I hope that helps a little bit, and obviously it'll save us, give us something to do, and stop us going around the twist. Anyway, so thanks very much for watching. Bye.